If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, outdoor people, campers, and hikers. What was the most bone chilling thing you've seen or experienced while in the deep woods? We were camping with a few friends when we started hearing really loud noises around us. Like a large animal is walking around. Leaves rustling, twigs cracking, some digging noises, and obvious hissing. I thought it might be a boar or wolf, and we were scared shless. Until we decide to track down the source of the noise to find a hedgehog, later, I learned hedgehogs make a lot of noise like that, pretending to be large animals, to scare predators away. I live in the Pacific Northwest. I love to go on night hikes alone before I was married and love to go to this certain remote area where I live after crazy work days. It was autumn, and the leaves were falling in full force. I was almost to my favorite spot, it must have been around 1pm I was walking uphill towards the overlook when I heard leaves crunching. It sounded near, but I couldn't estimate which direction. There are these huge boulders nearby, and as I passed them, I heard small rocks crumbling from them. Again, it was indistinct and very strange sounding. Metallic sounding. Hard to describe. It immediately gave me the shivers. Something strange is happening, I thought. I should leave now. I had my flashlight on at this point, ignoring my normal no light rule. It's a 1000 lumen beast of a light. I'm heading back, and just in the peripheral cone of the light, I see a shadowy blip. Like a dark, hazy, or smoky moving shadow. I caught it like this. Five seconds of it, and it was gone. It didn't leave me, the haze was there, then went transparent, then disappeared. I remember just when I was telling myself that it was nothing, I heard leaves crunching in the same direction, moving irregularly. Fast, fast, slow, fast, slow, slow, something like that. About 15 feet to my left. I ran about half a mile to the junction before collecting myself and nervously listening behind me all the way to the car. Me and my dad went on this hike. It is a one path way to a cliff. Look at the view and take the same path back. The walk there went fine, and we noticed an old mattress. I pointed it out and made a joke. We got to the cliff with nothing out of the ordinary. We hung out at the cliff for like 20 minutes, then headed on our way back. About one quarter of a mile of wood was completely burned down, we even noticed the mattress that was half incinerated. It was like the fire just before we arrived, but that makes no sense because we would have noticed it being on the same path and noticing the mattress. Also, it's hard to believe a fire hit an area of that size and went out in a span of 20 minutes. This burned out section was not something you could miss. We still can't figure it out. My ex told me about his uncle, who was out in the woods near Owensboro, Kentucky, one day chopping wood or something like that. He heard some strange sounds, like a murmur of voices out in the woods. He was pretty far away from town, but it sounded like several people. Curious, he followed the sounds, and as he got closer, he heard crying among the voices. He came to a clearing and saw a vision, I guess, of a priest leading women and children into hell. It was a pit open to the ground, and they were being taken by the priest. He heard the crackling fire and the sobbing of women and children. He backed up, ran to his truck, and took off, leaving his tools and everything in the woods. It happened many years before I heard it, but everyone in the family believed the story. Apparently, it really screwed up the uncle. Me and my two friends were walking home at 2 a.m. after having a campfire and food. We were walking out of the woods into an open field next to it, and as we were walking, we all felt a bit uncomfortable. We started joking, saying someone was watching us. Then I stopped because, about three meters away from us, I saw these two tiny red dots that looked like tiny eyes about the height of someone squatting off the ground. I quickly pointed it out, and my friend saw it too. It had no silhouette that I could see, it was very dark, then it just made a kind of gobble gobble sound like a turkey, but deeper and less turkey-like, more creepy-like, and bolted away at an extremely unbelievable speed. We all SHT ourselves and ran away. We eventually stopped, and to this day we still talk about what it could have been. Me and my friend, let's call him Derek. Derek and I were hanging out together, seeing that I was staying at his house. I brought beer, and we drank. After a while, about 5.30pm, I said, hey, there's this old abandoned house in the woods if you want to go check it out. He agrees, and we go, beer bottles in hand. We get there, and there are no stairs, none, like about a three foot drop from the door to the ground. This is important to remember. Anyway, we both climb into the house, and it's dark and smells like shit and piss. The house was set up strangely, so let me try to explain the layout. From the front door, there was a main room, to the right, what I think is a living room, and to the left, a kitchen, I suppose. 
All rooms had flooring except for the last room, which was the one directly in front of the front door. So we start yelling shit, like, if anyone's in here, come get us. And so, after about three minutes of exploring, we hear a loud thud from the floor. Me and Derek thought in our drunken state that it's just the floor breaking and we should leave. As soon as we say we're leaving, from out of the room with no floor, a dark figure appears crawling out of the floor. Me and Derek bolted out of the house, he got out fine, but I forgot there was no porch, so I tripped and fell on my back, knocking the wind out of myself. I didn't care because whatever that thing was, it was looking at me through a window. I ran through the field until I heard the screech. It sounded like scratching glass with a knife against your ear. I never went back to that house, and I don't ducking plan on it. I used to go camping with my family a lot, and I spent a couple summer weeks at a Girl Scout camp in the woods. This was probably one of the strangest things I have seen in the woods. It was my second year going to one of the week-long camps for Girl Scouts. The year prior, we had had lovely little cabins and bunk beds. This year, however, we were higher rank than we had been, and we were put in these open tents. Open to the point of needing bug nets around our cots. Open to the point, anything could get in. And to make matters worse, if you had to use the restroom, the nearest outhouse was down this soft dirt path that led into the woods. One night, I really had to go, despite not wanting to go anywhere near the woods in the dark. I have a deep-rooted fear of the woods when I can't see much. Shadows and tricks of the light can hide real threats. And to be honest, it is entirely possible and most likely was such a false sighting. But when I was little, I could have sworn that this is what I saw. What I saw that night made me refuse to go to the bathroom at night again. And I kept this shit to myself in fear that I would get picked on for making shit up. I saw some kind of wolf-like creature. Only it looked wrong. And I don't mean like wounded or like someone's dog had wandered in. I mean wrong. Although it held a wolf-like form, its tail was elongated, and you couldn't really see where the end of it was. Its face was warped with more eyes than it was supposed to have. And its body looked like it was almost melting off of its back. It's very hard to describe it properly because it was weird as hell and just wasn't right. I saw it slipping through the trees behind the outhouse as I left it and bolted my ash back to my tent. But I couldn't sleep that night. Not until my exhaustion made me. The next morning, the inside of my bug net was crawling with bugs, and the zipper was still zipped up. I have no idea how the bugs got inside, and it's not easy for them to get in other than the zipper. It was hard to get it off the bed just to shake it out. I legit to this day have no clue what happened since that was the only night it had happened. And I simply thought and still do that, my fear probably just played with my mind, and I simply didn't zip the bug up all the way or something. Who knows? Still creepy, AF. It was around 10 PM, and my dad's friend was driving around, locking all the gates so people couldn't drive on certain roads. And he's on a gravel road. All of a sudden, he sees a cloud of dust, as if someone just drove past him, but it came from the direction he just locked a gate in, so nobody should have been able to get in. He got out of his car and started walking down the road to see if he saw any tracks. He didn't, but he saw this old truck that looked like it had been sitting there for years. Keep in mind that this is the direction he just came from. He's starting to get sketched out, so he turns around to head back to his car, and when he does, he sees a body hanging. No joke. Someone hung themselves in the park. He called the police, and the guy had no family. My dad claims he actually saw the body. Apparently it was all skinny and blue and stunk as if it had been hanging for a couple days. Some people say they see the dead guy walking around. But yeah, pretty much, the road is haunted now. I was hanging around a small lakeside fire with my friends at night once, and suddenly one of us noticed a teenage kid standing next to a tree about 100 feet away. He was facing away from us, standing completely still, in a white t-shirt and khaki shorts. We were all immediately kind of freaked out, and we started yelling at him. He didn't move. One of my friends started climbing the rocks up to the tree line where he was, but it was too steep for him to get up. Kid turned his head to the right a little, but other than that, he did not move. It was totally unsettling, so we put out the fire and prepared to leave. As we were walking back through the woods to our cars, someone, assumedly the kid, followed us the entire way, throwing small rocks at us. We kept stopping and looking around for him, but every time we stopped, he stopped. I couldn't see or hear a single thing. Continued. Kept getting rocks thrown at us. I still don't know what the hell that was all about. Deep in the woods, my hiking partner and I were many miles from any trail, path, or hint of human development when we came across a two-seater outhouse surrounded by dense overgrowth and trees. This outhouse was well-maintained, painted, 
and supplied with toilet paper and magazines, even the screens on the window vents were in excellent condition. The ground around it showed no signs of human activity. Yet there it was, miles from civilization and no paths or trails leading to it. As we sat there, not at the same time, putting it to good use, we wondered how whoever built it managed to get all the building materials, tools, and equipment to such a remote location surrounded by a thick canopy of trees and overgrowth, and why they would do it in the first place. Before I became too severely disabled, I'd take a two-week solo camping trip out into the middle of the woods in Washington DC I had my cell phone on me, and I'd check in each day with some people, as I wasn't suicidal, but I really enjoyed the solitude. The last time I did this, I got a really uneasy feeling the first day. I just brushed it off as some anxiety due to being in a bit of pain. It just didn't let up, as I felt like someone was watching me. Someone watching me would have been really hard to do, too. I was about 5 miles, 8.05 kilometers, out from civilization, no one lived in the area, and the location was kind of unremarkable and didn't attract too many hikers. Finally, the anxiety just got too much. I was meditating, and my gut was screaming at me to get out of there. So I texted my sister, met her at the meeting place, walking backwards for a time, making sure I wasn't followed, etc., and got out of there. The next day, I read online that some hikers in the area went missing. They were later found dead about a month later, with very little decomposition. Supposedly, they looked like they were in agony. Where they were found is the spooky thing. They were about a half mile from where I was camping, slightly upriver. Plus, they never really found out who or what killed them or why they weren't eaten or really decomposed in the month that they were missing. I stopped camping in the area after that. I don't know if something was watching me or if something spooky went on, but I learned to appreciate my gut feelings after that. There is a very long ditch near where I grew up, it's maybe 10 to 12 feet deep. In the winter, it would dry up. When this happened, my friends and I would often go down and explore there. We usually played around in the same area, not venturing too far away since we were like 10 years old. One day, a friend and I decided to see how far we could walk down the ditch. We wanted to know if we could find where it ended. So we set off. After about 20 minutes of walking, when we'd passed the neighborhood and there was nothing but forest surrounding the ditch, we came across the dead body of. To this day, I don't know what it was. It was completely hairless and had a pinkish color to it. At first, we thought it was a baby pig because it had the head, body, and snout of a pig. The ducked up thing was that it didn't have trotters like a pig, it had paws like a dog with long nails. Its corpse was eerily perfect too there was no discoloration or decomposition, like it had just died moments before we stumbled across it. Seeing this utterly mysterious creature laying dead in the sand nearly gave me a heart attack. I have looked up pictures of hairless raccoons among other animals and have never found anything that resembles the creature we found. I'm not saying it's some supernatural monster, but it was very strange. I was out running my trap line after getting off my shift at 2 a.m. by myself. I always glance around while resetting my dog-proof traps to see if I stirred anything up. I looked up one time and had eyes watching me through some brush. All I had with me was my 22 bolt action rifle, which doesn't feed rounds reliably. The eyes were roughly dog or large cat height. They watched me for a while, seeming to see how the trap had been tripped by a field mouse, and a previous winter storm had frozen the trap solid. I kept an eye on them. I glanced up again for the god knows men of time, and they were gone without a sound. I still had no idea what was watching me. Walking the half mile to the truck in the dark by myself, it was hard to make myself look over my shoulder. I spent a lot of time alone in the woods, and this was the most unnerved I've ever been. I am not a hiker, but I have a story, it was a nice warm night, and my suburb in Austria backs onto a nature reserve, which is a great place to stargaze. Me, two friends, and a bag of goons in a backpack climbed up a hill in the dark with just our phones for light and set ourselves up to get drunk and enjoy the evening. An hour or so later, my friend gets up to pee behind a tree a couple meters away and then makes his way back towards us, only to find something following him back. A white, maybe? Dog-like thing that was definitely bigger than a fox, starts making this weird shrieking slash growling noise, and starts running towards me and my other friend. We grab the backpack full of goon, fruity lexia not to be wasted, and, drunk, ran or stumbled down this hill in the dark in the bush, being chased by a shrieking creature. I can't believe none of us ate shit or twisted an ankle but we managed to get to the bottom of a hill, hop a fence back into suburbia, and lose the thing. I always remember turning back to look at the dog thing while running and thinking how easily it could catch us if it really tried. In hindsight, going out in the bush in the middle of the night is horror movie fodder at best. Shenandoah National Park 
so I took the family camping for spring break. We stayed at Lewis Mountain Campground, towards the very back of the park. Where our tent was set up is right on the perimeter of the campground, and behind it is only wood and more wood. The AT is on the other side of the camp, so there isn't even a trail back there, otherwise, I would have just assumed it was a hiker, but it wasn't. So here's my experience. On the second night, I woke up twice to pee. I tend to drink a lot of coffee and then beer when camping, so this is pretty standard for me. Both times I walk out of the tent and then walk about 10 to 15 paces behind the tent, as I'm standing there in a bit of a sleepy fog. I see what, at first, I thought was someone standing inside their own tent swinging a camping lantern in a slow figure eight pattern. I remember thinking that was a really weird thing to do at 2.30 and 5 o'clock in the night. Gradually, as I'm staring and the fogginess of sleep is clearing up, I realize that there are no campsites in that direction, it's just wood and more wood. So as I stare, I become more and more enamored with this light. I start thinking, it's beautiful, or I should really go see what it is, and that's when my brain kicked in both times and said, get your dumb ass back in the tent. So I did. This happened exactly the same way both times. I still feel like I want to go over there and see what it was, but luckily I'm at home now and can't. But that light is an image I'll never forget. Just swirling in a slow figure eight, somehow both bright but seemingly obscured by fog, with long, equally slow traces, it was truly mesmerizing. It's been a while since a friend of mine told me this story, so bear with me, she's a paranormal investigator and all-around deep diver in paranormal activity but also grew up around here, central-slash-south Jersey. There's a small area called Bamber Woods. One day she had a bonfire and mentioned to me to stop playing with the spirit board as I was going to talk to something I didn't like at one point, so I asked if there were any spooky places around here. She had gone to Bamber Lake a few times, but once during a bonfire, I guess there wasn't much to do here growing up, so bonfires were the thing, she and her friend wandered off. They were just walking and talking when they heard a lot of little voices hushing, kind of speaking in low tones but hushing when they heard them coming. The voices picked up again, but with the voices were fast feet, kind of like very fast tussling in the leaves but like a dozen small animals running through, so Amy and her friend were on a walking path, but the fast feet were on the left side, and she realized they were rushing past her and her friend, so they stood still till the sound ended, about three to five minutes, and then walked towards where the rustling moved towards. And found a dead deer basically torn apart and leaving the head and basically bones, and as I know some animals are scavengers and will do things like that, we don't necessarily have animals like that out here, and as I said, she mentioned she distinctly heard little voices to go with the movements. She thinks they may have been forest gnomes or fae. I tried to go to those woods later on, and I didn't see or even feel anything out of the ordinary, but I went during the day as I don't have many people who will explore with me, and she refuses to set foot back in those woods. Any ideas? I was hiking with my girlfriend in the Humboldt, California, forest. We got pretty far from our campsite and had to hike back in the dark with no flashlights. We'd eaten some magic mushrooms earlier in the day and were both still a little switched on as we wound our way through the trees and undergrowth. I was popping the flash on my camera every so often to light our way. When I did this, the quick image I saw of the forest around us looked like an overly compressed JPG, like a Minecraft world. So, interesting visuals were still happening, and my body temperature was still a bit elevated, but I was by no means out of my mind on the shrooms. We'd been walking for a while, and I could hear a campsite off in the distance, maybe 30 yards or so. I could hear them laughing, and I could see the glow of their fire. It drew my attention in that direction, and then I heard a growl coming from something very close to me in the dark forest, like 10 to 15 feet away. It was something about 7 to 8 feet tall, and judging by the low rumble of the growl, it had a huge rib cage. I never saw it, I just told my girlfriend we needed to pick up the pace and get back to our campsite. I was probably surprised to see a bear standing and growling as we walked by. That's what I tell myself, anyway. It was 2011. I had just turned 21 years old and decided to pursue a new life in the mountains of Northern California, in Redwood Country. When I was 16, my family and I moved to a small town near Mount Shasta. The house we moved into backed up to a canyon, which was essentially the foothills of forests that encompass the majority of the wilderness of Northern California. At the time, I had no idea as to the mythological lore with which the region imbued. It didn't take too long for me to recognize that there was a strange energy to the place. The strangely mysterious and appetizing ambience was met with my insatiable curiosity about the unknown. During that summer on the same property, I had a very short range experience in broad daylight. I was simply walking along a small, peaceful creek that fed the river there, minding my own business. All of a sudden, 
It was as though a herd of something monstrously indomitable was barreling my way. To this day, I have never heard anything like it, and I hope I never do again. Whatever it was, it must have been moving at a speed of 25 miles per hour plus and was moving tire-sized river rocks as though they were pebbles. The sound was beyond harrowing. I'm not kidding, whatever was moving these 200 to 300 pounds rocks like child's play had to have been massive. Needless to say, it was flight or fight for me, and fight wasn't an option. At one point, as I was running for my life away from this thing, it was gaining on me so quickly that, even if it was the last thing I did, I wanted to have a look at what it was. Instinctually, I guess, I wanted to at least identify and logically associate the thing that had the capacity to destroy me with such ease. To my surprise, as I turned around, the sound persisted, but it appeared as though whatever was moving the giant rocks to create the almost unimaginable sound was cloaked to the naked eye. It was as though I could see the rocks tumbling beneath this translucent glob. At that moment, the noise stopped, and I was as awestruck as I was relieved. Whatever was chasing me had no physical, visible form, and it was massive. Looking back on it, it feels like I was bluff charged by some mythical creature. Knowing full well that whatever it was could have had me if it wanted, I can't help but think this creature was some sort of apex predator. So this happened yesterday, and I can't stop thinking about it, even though it's probably nothing. My family has a small farmstead in more or less the middle of nowhere in central Texas, to the southeast of Austin. But very rural, all dirt roads, only a couple neighbors within a mile or so. I usually walk with my dog in the thick woods on our property, but sometimes we walk along the dirt roads because it's like we have them to ourselves, maybe five to eight cars will pass by our place on the county road in the course of a given day. Yesterday, we were walking along the dirt road back towards home when we heard something crash in the woods off to our left. I looked closely but didn't see anything, and I just figured it was an animal or a branch falling. No biggie. A few more steps, and two coyotes burst out of the woods and crossed the road right in front of us. This is weird because it's late in the day for yotes to be active, but more so because they look huge for coyotes, almost like wolf size, we don't have wolves here anymore, and one of them looks kind of hunched over like it's hurt or it's a bipedal animal loping along on all fours for some reason. Note, and this comes into play in a second, that I saw absolutely no antlers or anything. My dog loses her shit. Okay, so these big, possibly injured, coyotes run into the brush on the other side of the road. My dog and I kind of stand there for a bit, but then move on, it's the country, there are coyotes, whatever. We round a corner, and here comes one of the coyotes, crossing the road again, fast. It scoots under the fence, and I watch it run across the pasture past some cattle, who are totally unbothered by this big predator running by them. I call my dog back to me because I know the second one is probably about to pop out, and I don't want her to get into a fight, that she'd lose. Here's where it gets a little weird. Sure enough, out runs the second one, it's the hunched over and injured looking one. It hits the fence line, where there's a bit of low scrubby brush. I wait for it to pop out on the other side and start watching to see how these cows are going to react. But it doesn't come out, it kind of just disappears into the tiny patch of brush, which doesn't seem at all big or dense enough to conceal it. We slowly move closer to the fence or brush to see if this coyote is hurt, hung up in the fence, or something. All of a sudden, one of the biggest, most majestic bucks, male deer, I've seen around here pops out of this fence line and runs into the field. His antlers are huge, and he's a big boy, taller and more muscular than most of our central Texas deer, he runs along a bit, then just turns and watches us. We go closer to the fence to see what's up with this coyote, but there's no coyote. And absolutely nowhere a coyote could have hid. The deer is still watching us, and I don't know what to do, so I just shout good morning and say something like um, we mean you no harm and walk home. So yeah. The big, injured coyote kind of morphed into a big, healthy buck more or less before my very eyes. I guess it was probably a deer all along, slumped down and slinking fast away from a coyote. But that's weird because, A, I saw the coyote twice, and it definitely looked like a coyote with definitely no antlers, B, a big ass buck isn't going to run away from a lone coyote, though they would from a wolf, but that would be even crazier than a shape-shifting deer yote or coyote deer. Shit is crazy out here in the sticks sometimes, even in the middle of the day. In 2018, me, my wife, and my son went camping in South Louisiana. I've always been an avid outdoorsman, and I was trying to get my son to spend time outside, as he is usually a very indoor, video game kind of kid. We get to the campground, and we take a campsite that's secluded towards the rear of the campground and requires a canoe to reach. I love this campsite because you can see tons of alligators on the way, as well as bald eagles and other really cool animals. 
We get to the campsite through a little creek-like area, the other sides are surrounded by a lake. Our own personal island. All day we fish and canoe, and me and my son play in the creek. Later in the evening, we cook on the campfire, tell stories, and just talk about life. Around 1 colon 45 2-ish, my wife gets tired and says they will go behind a tree to use the restroom, and then they are going to head to sleep. I said it sounded good, and as they walked off, I climbed into the tent to take some stuff out to make room. As I'm coming out, I see a flash light by the creek, and my wife's voice rings out, hey, my name, followed by his voice, yeah, dad, you've got to come see this. I start heading that way, and then I hear someone moving behind me. I turn to look, and my wife and son walk up and ask me where I was heading. I told them that I heard them calling me from the opposite direction. My wife scolds me and tells me that I know my son is already sort of scared of the woods and that scary stories shouldn't be told to him right before he sleeps. I turn around, and that light from the flashlight is gone. As we lay down, my son finally doses off. I tell my wife that I was serious about what I heard, clear as day, and she tells me to just give it a rest. To this day, I have no clue how to explain this. I've been to this campsite several times before and after and never experienced it again. It sent chills down my spine to think about it and to think about what I would have found had I gone down to the creek. My little brother and I have sort of made a tradition out of section hiking the Fontana Dam Klingsman Dome section of the ad as an out and back once a year. It's a tough little section, 6.5k elevation gain and 31 miles, and we do it twice in 4 days, and usually it's filled with boar, deer, and bears and all sorts of cool wildlife. One night, when we were the only two hikers posted up at Spence Field, around 3 or 4 in the morning, the entire woods went silent. Dead silent. I remember I actually woke up because I felt something unusual was going on. After a few minutes of lying there a bit spooked, I hear a ducking loud whooping sound that starts low and quiet and gets progressively louder and sounds like it's coming from the top of the trees. At this point, my brother is awake too, and I'm like, do you hear that? And he's like, yes. And we both just laid there listening to it for about an hour until it stopped. It sounded identical to a howler monkey from the zoo. I don't know how to explain it. I tried to talk to someone else we saw out on the trail about it, and they thought it might have been an owl waking up, but I have done deep research into all owl vocalizations, and I have never found anything like what we heard that night. I seriously welcome any kind of information or attempts at explaining away this experience. I would be relieved to discover this was just an owl, but I hesitate to believe that's possible. So I already know there are no skinwalkers in the Appalachian Mountains, but could someone explain this stuff because it's really freaking me out? So my family has owned this lot of land in Hiawassee, Georgia, since the 1980s, and my dad and his family would take vacations up there. It's completely secluded from any form of city or other life, you have to drive for at least two miles on a gravel road to reach another house. With tight, narrow woods all around, a few more houses have sprung up since my childhood, making it less scary to stay there. Anyway, This entire story starts all the way back to my dad staying there. The place was a simple trailer. Across the gravel road leading straight to the top of the mountain the trailer was on, my dad would go up there a lot and just sit. He told me a story one time he was sitting up there when he was a teenager and he heard heavy cracking, something that sounded identical to humans, but remember, this is far away from any other house, this was basically their land. He said first the cracking came from behind him, then next thing it was in front of him. He said he stood up and screamed get the duck out of here, and he said the footsteps disappeared, he didn't hear anything walk off, footsteps that sounded right behind and in front of him just vanished, they were gone. He sprinted home and was terrified to go back out in the woods that day, now it's my turn to go up the mountain, he didn't tell me this story until after. I'm with my friend, and Netflix has just added the download movies to watch later thing on their app, but the trailer has literally no service at all. My dad says maybe you can walk to the top, and because there are fewer trees, I'll get good enough reception. We end up climbing it and getting to the top, and the same thing that happened to my dad starts to happen, first footsteps that sound heavy behind us and then in front of us, but then it starts to sound like we're being surrounded, and we're terrified. Then we hear turkey gobbles far away, which in retrospect was weird because the footsteps sounded closer and heavier than a turkey, and so our nerves are eased just for a second because we teenagers could take on a flock of turkeys, but then what sounded like right in front of the trees. We heard a voice say, hey, it sounded almost like my dad, like, almost like it, but a different version, maybe slightly more nasally? I didn't have time to really process that it was my dad's voice. At the moment, I was really just thinking someone said, hey in front, and, you know, rural Georgia. After hearing footsteps all around me, we both booked it downhill and back to the trailer, 
not really knowing if there were footsteps following us or not. It wasn't until we got back that my friend said, did you hear the voice too? Didn't it sound like your dad a little bit? And my mind was racing. I ran inside the trailer to see if my dad was inside, and sure enough, he was. I asked him if he went up to the top of the mountain, and he didn't. Thinking better, it made no sense for the voice to come from in front of us since he could only be behind us. I told him what we heard, and that's when he told me his story of what happened to him when he was a teenager. He didn't know anything about skinwalkers or, you know, the cryptids of the time, but I had the internet and had always wondered what I heard. I live on Cape Cod, in a town called Mashpee, home to the Mashpee Wampanoag Indian tribe. I work for the Mashpee DPW, and last November, one of the strangest things happened to four of us DPW workers in the woods in Mashpee. I am working with myself, my supervisor, Rich, and two others, one of whom is a 60-year-old full-blooded womp. We are clearing a fire path in the Mashpee River woodlands, down off Mashpee Neck Road in town. We are clearing trees and making our way towards the Quashnet River. Once we got close to the river, we were to turn around and chip the down trees. Just as we approach the river and turn the chipper on, I grab a branch from a down tree and notice, about 20 yards away, a woman and a child dressed in what looked like deer skin clothing. I turn to show my supervisor and look back, and they are gone. Thinking I was just seeing thins, I didn't mention anything of it. We work for another 10 minutes or so, and I have an increasingly sad feeling. There were no sad thoughts going on in my head, just a sense of something very depressing. We work up until coffee break, and I can't take any more of it. Tell the guys what I saw. They mostly laugh it off, the older Wampanoag tells me they used to bury people along the river, it was tradition and what not. Thinking this is creepy, we are about to get back to work. Just as I was about to turn the chipper on, we all heard a loud boom, boom, boom from what sounded like a drum coming from the river, which is now about 100 yards from us. We all look at each other, silent. This happens again. Then again. For two minutes, this goes on. Keep in mind that there isn't a house within three miles, and the nearest road is over a mile in the opposite direction. The only thing in these woods are paths created hundreds of years ago. Thinking to myself that this couldn't get any stranger, a huge ball of light comes into view just above the river. This light is an almost perfect circle, whitish yellow in color with a blue hue around the outside. It races just above the river and disappears. No more drums. We start the chipper back up, my sad feeling still there, and as we work our way out towards the road, it subsides until I can't see the river. As soon as the river is out of sight, an intense, fury burn is felt on my back. I throw my jacket and sweater away. In the 30 degree weather, this was an uncomfortable feeling, and then that was it. There is much more to this story, as I have had two return trips and have found an ancient Wampanoag legend called a Pukwagi to be all too real. When I was younger, between 7 and 12, my grandparents used to drive me and my mother home from Wales back to the UK or vice versa at night. Often, they would drive at night and through the Welsh back roads because they were quicker. But because I was often looking out the window and couldn't read my books in the dark and there were no headlamps overhead, I used to imagine a very thin, lanky goatman with deer horns on his head, running on all fours, chasing after the car as we navigated the dark roads. I didn't really think it was scary until one night when we had gotten to my grandparents' house and I was put to bed in the back room. This back room faced my grandparents' land, which is a heavily wooded swampy area at the back of the hard ground where they had their chickens. I was drifting off to sleep when I heard this scream, similar to a fox but a bit growly, if that makes sense. Little 12-year-old me climbs out of bed and peers out of the window, and I see my friend coming up and out of the swamp. This thing is pale as a ghost and just starts wandering around on the lawn, moaning as if it were in agony. I keep staring, terrified at what I was watching, before this thing looks up and stares at the house. I jump down, climb quickly under my blankets, and cover my head. The next thing I hear is this ghostly wailing and bashing on wood, which sounded like it was coming from the chicken houses. I didn't get up all night and just waited till morning, too afraid to sleep. It turns out in the morning that one of the chicken houses was broken into, and most of the chickens were killed, some of their bodies were dragged outside of the house and ripped apart. I never saw them and never told my grandfather, who blamed himself for leaving the door open somehow and went out the next few nights shooting foxes to get revenge. I think it could have either been a Gwilion or Sihiroeth if what I saw was true, but I don't think I ever will know for sure. A co-worker and I were visiting corn farms in northwestern Iowa during the fall. We had spent all day crisscrossing down muddy back roads, checking in on farms to see how their crops had turned out and if the recent bad weather had impacted them. We decided to call it a day around 10 p.m. We finished our last appointment and started the two-hour trek back to our hotel. It wasn't the best drive. 
The same muddy roads we had taken during the day at night turned into dangerous slip and slide tracks filled with deep potholes and large rocks that could pop our tires if we hit them too hard. We slowly made our way back with only our headlights to guide our way. At one point, my co-worker mentioned how they had never been in a place so dark before. We found a place to park the car and got out to admire our surroundings. On both sides of the road were old corn fields that hadn't been used in several years. We were far from any city, with no street lights or other cars in sight. We were in complete darkness. We turned off the car and headlights and stood in the darkness. It took a few minutes for our eyes to adjust, but when we could finally see, the entire sky was filled with stars. We could see the Milky Way rising above us. We stared in awe for a few minutes before we noticed the strange blue light off in the distance floating over one of the cornfields. The light was a hazy baby blue. It looked to be about 200 yards out from us and maybe 6 feet in the air. The light didn't flicker, it didn't move. It just floated in the air. After about 30 seconds, a second light appeared in the same cornfield. Then another and another. We counted 11 total lights hovering over the field. We couldn't see anything in the fields that could make the lights. The lights were not blinking, not flickering, and not moving. The lights just hovered there, like they were watching us. We jumped back in the car, turned on as many lights as possible, and continued to our hotel. When I was a kid, my brother and I used to go explore this big swamp behind our neighborhood. It was probably 20 acres, and somewhere towards the far end used to be a drive-in movie theater that was retired in the 70s. There were a bunch of rotted old 40s and 50s cars that got abandoned, pristine vintage Coke bottles buried in the mud, old money, etc., so it was a gold mine for treasure. Our dad made us take a beagle with us since there were wildcats, feral dogs, coyotes, etc. back there. Growing up with hunting beagles, we were obviously accustomed to baying, so we never paid much attention when he'd start screaming since it was usually just him smelling a rabbit or something. But one evening it was a different racket, this one wasn't the normal high-pitched scream and howling noises. He was letting out deep, rumbling growls and barking aggressively. We followed the noises and found him barking at an old, mostly decayed car. Without taking his eyes off the car, he repositioned himself between us and the car with his head lowered and his hackles raised, almost like he was trying to protect us. He stood there, growling for a couple of seconds, and then started snarling and rapidly snapping at the air like he was trying to grab someone's legs, but nothing was there. My brother and I immediately hightailed at home, and he came back on his own a little later. We still have absolutely no idea what happened. It wasn't odd for him to be protective of us, that's why we always took him since he was very attached to us and would stand up to predators if we ever encountered one. But he'd seen those cars countless times before and was never phased by them. Whatever he was seeing, he absolutely hated it and wanted to kill it before it got to us. And it wasn't an animal, because anyone who has ever had a hunting dog can tell you there's a distinct difference between the noises when confronting a wild animal and aggression noises. I grew up on a family farm that had been in my family for well over 100 years. I had to sell through divorce, moving, etc. But while growing up, my father always said that I had nothing to fear in the woods. The farm was 720 acres, set back from the road. The road was blacktop, but we did have gravel roads running all through it. There were many times I would be running around in the woods and come across cold spots. I never thought anything of them, as I figured it was shade from the trees. I don't mean cool, I mean cold. It felt good in the hot Missouri sun, but you would feel the sweat get cold on your skin and bring up goosebumps. Maybe I'm overreacting or overthinking it. Also, it was never in one spot when I ran across them. They'd just be everywhere. I'd run through it for a bit and then move on. I could come back to the spot, and it was not cold. I just figured the sun had moved and warmed the spot. Also, I remember when the woods would get silent. Again, it never registered to me, although I do recall those were times my dog would get close to me, almost nudging me in a certain way. I was young and dumb and just went wherever. Until I was 14, I never worried about anything on the farm, day or night. I don't know if I was oblivious or if there were just rational explanations. The only weird thing that I would classify as weird was when I saw a large, dark shape once in the woods. Like a shadow. I was out plinking with my dads. 22. I saw this thing moving in the woods, and that did scare me, so I started shooting at it. I think I shot maybe three times when I realized that it could be somebody or one of dad's cows. In either case, I stopped. I ran across some tilled ground and got by a berm, reloaded, and when I looked up, this thing had moved quickly, from where I had last seen it to where it would be coming out of the woods. I beat my feet back to the house and tried to tell my parents, but of course I was 12, and they thought I just had an overactive imagination. About this encounter, I never heard any noise. 
I only noticed it because it looked like a shadow, it was darker in the forest than in the surroundings. I saw no discernible feature other than that it was tall, I'd say over seven. It moved fast. Within a short amount of time of not looking at it, it covered a lot of ground. And through all of this, there was no sound. I don't know what it was, but I classify it as Bigfoot or Momo as we say in Missouri. This was not in the boot hill or forest, but fairly flat, middle Missouri farmland. Rolling ground with spots of timber on it. As I now look back on living there, as I said, my family had that land for over 100 years, people died there, and my family took care of the land and the animals on it. From the crops we raised to the love of the land that farmers know and understand, maybe all of that gave me a pass on anything weird happening to me. My only encounter was when I was starting to become a man, and maybe it was showing me that I needed to grow up. But again, I never felt any evil or malice from it. I was the one who was scaring myself. I used to run in the Sam Houston National Forest quite often. There was this one trail that I really enjoyed and always used to run on. I ran it so often that I could close my eyes and tell you the twists and turns as well as the mile markers for about 10 miles. Well, being young and dumb, I decided to take the love of my life, now wife, out on a hike around 5 pm we brought a string bag with some water and snacks. We both had our phones, but due to it being later in the day, the batteries were drained. It was early October, so the sun set earlier than I was used to. For those who do not know, it gets darker much sooner than what you would usually expect in the woods. Anyway, we are about 3 miles out, and the sunlight in the woods is fading ever so quickly, so we decide to head back. As we make our way back, about a mile away, the light is completely gone. We are now hiking back in pitch black, like void pitch black, and decide to whip out our phones. They are dead. So, using my knowledge of the trail and trying to picture an imaginary outline of the trail to follow, we slowly tried to make our way back, and boy was it slow. As we approach an area of the trail where it opens up a bit with fewer trees, we hear a bunch of movement within the tall grass. At first, it just sounded like a squirrel being startled and taking off, but then the sound got louder and more violent. As if it were something deliberately stomping on the ground. The sound then spread 15 feet in each direction and got closer and closer, as if there were multiple whatevers coming in our direction. I told my wife to get behind a tree, and I followed. The odd thing is that there was no sound of whatever was coming towards us. No grunts of hogs or HMPFS of deer, and we were talking quite loudly, so these animals, being more skittish, would have definitely kept their distance. As we sit behind this tree, we hear things come towards us. Encroaching closer and closer. At first, it was a slow movement through the grass, but then it picked up pace to what seemed like a slight jog. My heart was pounding, and my senses were heightened. I could feel the rush of adrenaline coming, and as I was sitting here thinking that we were about to be mauled by something or taken away by someone, I stepped out from behind the tree and just yelled as loud as I could. It was a deep yell that came from my diaphragm, and the sound stopped. We heard a couple steps jostle around, but no squeals or hoofs galloping, just silence, as if whatever was coming towards us took a step back and just watched us. I could feel it. My skin was crawling with the feeling of something's energy being right in front of me, but I could not see within a foot in front of us. I reached over to my wife, grabbed her, and slowly walked away from where we were. The entire way back, I felt as if something was watching us and just staying far enough away to keep my senses on edge. I could feel his presence. As we finally reached the trail entrance, the feeling went away, and whatever was there decided to let up on its applied pressure. I went back and ran the trail many times after this experience, but I still get weird feelings when I approach the exact spot. I still do not know what was in those woods. I used to work for the United States government, assisting farms and farm workers around the country. I often worked in very remote areas of the country and had some strange encounters. There is one, however, that really stands out. The first one occurred while I was working in the southeastern United States. A co-worker and I were winding our way through the Appalachian Mountains, checking in on various tobacco and tomato farms deep in the mountains. While trying to find our way to an especially remote farm, we turned down the wrong dirt road and got lost. We were miles from the nearest city, and we found ourselves surrounded by a dense forest and mountains towering above us, blocking any cell service. We tried to turn around, but the road was too narrow. We had to keep driving until the road widened a bit more and we could turn the car around. After a few minutes of driving into the woods, we stumbled upon a clearing wide enough to let us turn the car around. As we approached, we noticed the ruins of an old house in the middle of the clearing. The house had burned down and looked like it could barely stand. The ground around the house was still charred from the fire, but the surrounding trees and forest were fine. We parked the car on the edge of the clearing and got out to have a closer look. 
As we approached, my co-worker and I stopped simultaneously in our tracks. We both realized at that moment that the ground around the house had been burned in a perfect circle, with the house in the exact center. Something didn't feel right. My co-worker and I looked at each other as if we were looking for the other person to acknowledge how strange the situation was, but we kept walking towards the house. The moment we stepped foot into the burned circle, all of the ambient noise of the forest stopped and went dead silent. All the bugs, the birds chirping, the wind whipping through the trees, the sound of the grass swaying back and forth, all of it stopped. It was as if someone had secretly slipped noise cancelling headphones onto my co-worker and me. We again stopped walking to check to see if we were hearing things right, and that's when the noise began. It was a booming, rumbling noise echoing in the sky. It sounded like the loudest, deepest trumpet you could ever hear. It was so loud that it hurt our ears. I could feel the noise rattling in my eardrums. It was constant. It didn't change the pitch. It didn't stop or take a break. A cold chill ran down my spine, and every part of me felt like something was very, very wrong. We looked at the sky and looked around to try to see what could be making the noise, but there was nothing. There were no clouds in the sky, and we were all alone. Meanwhile, the noise kept going, and the feeling that something was wrong only grew stronger. My co-worker and I both turned around and ran back to our car as fast as we could. The moment we stepped outside of the burn circle on the ground, the booming noise stopped, and the normal sounds of the forest returned. We could hear the birds again. We could hear the wind and the leaves on the trees. We jumped into the car and drove out of the woods in silence. We didn't turn the radio on or say a word until we returned to our hotel. When we parked, my co-worker just looked at me and asked, that happened, right? To this day, I can't explain that house, what the noise we heard was, or why we could only hear it when we stepped into the circle. I grew up camping in the river bottoms of East Texas. There's nothing particularly pretty or pleasant about being out there, it's just away from everything, and fishing or hunting can be really, really good. It is also a ducking creepy place if you're out there at the right time of the year. The river bottoms flood in the spring, so in late summer or fall, everything is uniformly dried mud brown, most of the trees are uniformly small, 4 to 10 inches, and you can walk for hours and it would still look exactly like the area outside of your campsite. It is very easy to get lost. When I was around 9 or 10, on a camping trip with my family, my uncle got turned around while out hunting. We had specific whistles that we would use to communicate our location with others and help locate ourselves when we were out in the woods, but he didn't realize he was turned around until he walked out of earshot. He was found three days later, almost 20 miles from where we were camping. He had crossed a river and two highways but didn't remember any of them. Complete panic. I was in the truck with my dad when we went to pick him up on the side of the road, surrounded by state troopers. He just bawled and blubbered all the way back to his house. It made a huge impact on me, and I've had a fear of getting lost in the woods ever since. Okay, fast forward 25 years. I'm camping with my wife, her parents, and my three-year-old daughter in the middle of nowhere in the Smoky Mountains. My in-laws offered to watch the kids so that my wife and I could go on a hike. Not long into the hike, I went back for my camera and found my three-year-old wandering through the woods by herself, about 50 yards away from camp. I wouldn't have heard her if she hadn't been singing to herself. Now, I had previously expressed reservations about leaving her with my sometimes absent-minded in-laws after previous incidents, one of which led to a trip to the ER, where I didn't feel like they kept a close enough eye on her. But it had always turned into a huge fight with my wife, so I didn't press it. Because of this, I scooped up my kid and took her with me on the hike with my wife without making a big deal out of it or letting my in-laws know that I was taking her with me. We get back to camp about four hours later. I came up with an excuse to pause with my daughter before we're back in view of camp because I wanted to see how her parents would react to our return. They were both sitting next to the tent, reading books, not a care in the world. They didn't realize that anything was wrong until I walked back carrying my kid. Huge fight. My wife, who wasn't previously aware of how I found our daughter, completely flipped out on them. We packed them up, hiked back to the road, and drove the 15 hours back home that day. It took my wife several weeks before she calmed down enough to explain to them without screaming why it was such a problem. It's been five years, and I still get angry when I think about it. I went to visit my cousins in rural New York recently, and they are in, like, deep backwoods New York. The closest neighbors are a mile away, and the property is basically cut into the woods and super hilly. I'm from Texas, and it's not like that at all, obviously, and one night we were all on the back porch hanging out and my cousin was playing hurt animal noises on a loudspeaker to try and get some wolves to howl and also howling noises to provoke them. Around 12 or 1 a.m., they all went to bed, and I wanted to think about random stuff, so I just sat outside on the back porch, 
still enjoying the night. Eventually I just start walking towards the back of the property, their backyard is like a football field wide and about 1,500 feet long. As I'm halfway, I just hear something along the tree line growl, and I ducking froze when I realized what we were doing earlier and also realized I was not the apex predator out here. I ran back towards the house and did not look back until I was inside. I was white as a ghost, it was probably nothing, but I was not risking it. I live in Georgia, the state, in a rural town not too far from a major city. There's a set of woods that's behind our house, and it divides two neighborhoods, it's about a mile eyed. Strange occurrences have always surrounded these woods. One night, I was taking our dog out. He stays in the back half of the house because he does not like the other dogs. I took him out the side door and walked around the house to the fence. For some reason, when we left the house, he was absolutely terrified. He didn't want to go out, which is very unusual for a dog who's quick to snatch someone's soul if prompted. Not thinking about it, we pushed onward. After he tinkled, we walked back. This is when I noticed it, or rather, heard it. Crunching of leaves. At first, I thought it was one of our dozen cats on the property until I realized it was matching my steps. If I walked, you could hear me walking. If I stopped, it stopped. There's a small clearing between the woods where one of the sheds is. That's when we saw it. My dog was first to see something, and then I saw some. I dunno. Creature? It was taller than the shed, so maybe a good 8 feet tall, and it darted across the clearing at a crazy fast speed. My dog, who again isn't scared of anything, bolted so fast that I dropped his leash, and he ran to the door, whining. I was quickly behind him. Once we were inside, I quickly bolted the door and ran to tell my girlfriend what happened. She immediately wanted to investigate, saying it's probably a woodland creature. Armed with two flashlights, we went out the front door. As we walked towards the wood line, we could hear something moving around. It sounded maybe 200 yards away. As we scanned with our flashlights, we saw nothing but kept hearing it. Then we heard it get closer and closer until it was maybe 20 feet away. Still nothing. No eyes, not even an animal call. Just rustling. My girlfriend is now scared for the house. I decided to check with the neighbors to see if maybe one of their many dogs got out. When I arrived at his house, my neighbor, whom we'll call Dave, explained that all his dogs were accounted for. Curious, he came to investigate. This is when I noticed that whatever this thing was, it followed me along the wood line to Dave's house and was now behind Dave's house. With a gun in hand, we went into his backyard, scanning for something. We could hear it rustling or maybe running. About 100 yards away in thick swampy woods, way too thick for a person to walk in, let alone run in. Then it stopped. It was dead silent. Scanning and on edge, we hear and see nothing, and then, bam, all of a sudden, it was five feet in front of us sprinting at me. It slammed the fence so hard that it rocked it back and forth. Dave, scared shitless, shot randomly at well. Nothing. We never saw it. Never let it get close to us. Again, as I mentioned, the woods are thick. It was too thick to run in, so the duck teleported silently in front of us and slammed the gate. Spooked, we were about to run. Then we heard it. It was human in nature, but not English. It sounded. Alien-like? It is not a known language. Dave, a hunter for the last 40 years still to this day, can't explain what that was. Anyway, after we heard that, we bolted. He covered me, and I ran to my house. Not 10 minutes later, we both hear a loud explosion coming from the woods. It shook our houses and flickered our power. I ran outside to see what it was, and of course nothing, but when Dave came out and confirmed he felt the same thing, we were both once again terrified. Moments later, a few strangers from the neighborhood came driving down to our cul-de-sac, and they all agreed that the blast sound they heard came from behind our house. 911 was called, and the two police officers interviewed us separately. Our stories match. The responding officers refused to go anywhere near those woods. They took the report and left. To this day, we're still not sure what that encounter was. Also, Dave doesn't go outside at night anymore. It spooked him that badly. I was camping in the middle of nowhere in Washington, near Mount Reiner. Like, not an official campground, just way out in the forest where I wouldn't have expected another human for miles. One night, I woke up and heard something. I opened my tent, and there is a guy sitting by where my fire had been right outside my tent. Nothing particularly noteworthy about the guy, just a fairly regular looking dude just sitting there a couple feet from my tent. No bag, pack, or anything with him, just a guy. He saw me open the tent, his eyes got huge, like he had just seen a ghost, and he took off. It shook me up pretty badly, 
but over the next day I managed to put it out of my mind fairly well after writing it off as just some odd occurrence and a guy that was probably high or something and had somehow managed to set up a camp coincidentally not far from mine. Then two days after that, and 10 to 15 miles away in totally random directions that nobody could take the same path as on accident, I was sitting by the fire that night and started hearing noises that I got more and more convinced were a person. I called out to them, and out of the darkness, someone was like, do you know how to get to Bells Canyon? I said no. I don't even think that's a real place there. They kept talking just out of my line of vision. I tried to see them with my flashlight, but they yelled, aim that away, and, kind of spooked and not wanting to piss off a potentially crazy person, I did. After like 15 minutes of me being very freaked out and them talking and asking completely random questions from the darkness, it sounded like the voice had gotten closer, so I shined my light that way again, and it was the same dude who had been outside my tent two nights before. He had to have followed me almost 15 miles over two days because there is no way he could have just accidentally wound up in the same spot as vast as that wilderness is. There is no possible way. As soon as my light hit him, he took off again. I started to chase him but didn't want to get lost in the wilderness in the dark, so I stopped quickly after probably only 100 to 200 feet. This one couldn't be written off, because the only way he could have been in both places was specifically if he was following me. I decided the trip was over very early in the morning and hiked back out over three days, constantly doubling back, trying to throw anyone following off my trail, and occasionally hiding and waiting to see if he would come by following me. I really cannot describe how terrifying it was to feel like I was being hunted through the woods and to actually have to brainstorm on things I could do to best avoid potentially being murdered. On the first night of hiking out, twice I heard what sounded like a person walking circles outside my tent, but by the time I mustered the courage to look, nobody was there. On the second night, I heard what I thought was an animal making noises at first in the distance, but slowly decided it sounded more like a human making animal calls. It could have actually been an animal, but I didn't actually see the guy again. But it really sounded like a person making howling noises. I literally almost cried when I finally got back to the car. The relief was so strong. To this day, it's probably the most terrifying experience I've ever had. I have no idea who the guy was or what his intentions were, and I have no way of getting an explanation but I really can't articulate just what a terrifying few days it was. This takes place in my hometown of Vernon, New Jersey, in 2009. The town is near the northern tip of New Jersey in the Appalachian Mountains and borders New York State. I was 17 at the time, and I was at a party with a friend. The town is very large and divided up into different communities, mostly lake-based, but the one my friend's house was in was called Old Orchard. It was more developed than a typical neighborhood, but it was up a steep hill with lots of woods around it. It was a summer evening, so we spent our time outside in their backyard. Some people were drinking, but myself and the other witness were not. The backyard had a thin tree line dividing it from the lot behind it, and with leaves on the trees, it was thick enough to block your view of the yard. Well, after dark, I went through the tree line and into the next lot with someone. We walked a few steps through the trees, and they sat with their backs to the tree line facing the lot, which was a large, upward sloping hill with a single tree in the center, maybe 100 yards from us. The lot was bordered on the right by a road with a streetlight that partially illuminated the area, and to the left there were similar tree lines bordering other properties. After sitting and talking for a while, we both fell quiet when we heard something. It was just for a moment, but it sounded like sniffing, like the sound a dog makes with its nose to the ground searching for something. I was facing the tree line bordering my friend's backyard. We could clearly hear everyone in the yard carrying on only feet away, the sniffing sound didn't continue. I glanced around behind me into the lot, saw nothing, and we continued talking. To preface the rest of the story, I want to note that Northern NJ has a large black bear population, and in my town, it was very common to see them in your yard, crossing the road, or even having them break into your home in search of food. Combine that with being someone who spent a lot of time outside and in the woods, and I know what a bear looks like and how it moves and sounds and I know what other large predators are in the area. And what I saw was none of these things. So some time passes, long enough to forget about the phantom sniffing, and then I hear it again, and the other person does as well. It's the same nose on the ground, sniffing out prey type sounds. And it is loud, seemingly coming from all around us. We can still hear the party going on, and as loud as the sniffing is, they don't seem to notice it. I look at the person I'm with, and they are frozen, with their eyes locked on something ahead of them. I turn and face into the lot as the sniffing continues, and under the tree I see the large, dark outline of something. It was shaped like a bear but larger, standing about six feet on all fours. Its head is down to the ground and it is sniffing around under the tree, 
but it still makes no sense that we would be able to hear it at all from where we were, let alone how loud it was. Then it moves forward, and that's when I am certain it's not an animal I am familiar with, because it puts its two front legs out first, and then its back legs shuffle forward in one motion like a rabbit or a kangaroo. I didn't watch for very long, but enough to see it keep shuffling forward like that a few more times, the whole time its head is to the ground, sniffing as loud as it was breathing in our ears. Again, it was only bright enough to see as a silhouette, but it appeared to have fur. I had a strong feeling that it could feel me looking at it, and if I kept watching, it would notice me. And I did not want that to happen. The person and I locked eyes, grabbed each other's hands, and bolted back into the yard. Northern NJ is supposed to have a Bigfoot-type cryptid called Big Red Eye. And the Jersey Devil, of course. But I don't really think it fits. I was told it was a dogman, but that also doesn't seem to fit. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences in my life, but this is the only cryptid type I've ever had. I don't know what it was, but I got the distinct feeling it was something I was not supposed to see. I'm your traditional wimp camping nerd. My buddies finally convinced me to go real camping in the interior of one of our provincial parks. We drove out to the spot, ditched our car, and started the hike. There was no problem for the first couple of hours. Then we start noticing the few animals around us acting really weird, squirrels, birds, and a fox, all running towards us, then past us. Not tons, but enough that we started noticing a weird trend. The first one just looked like it was actually coming for us, we braced and saw it run past. Repeated several times. The fox, I think it was a fox anyhow, certainly not a wolf, I was actually scared of, but again, nothing, it just seemed to want to get away from something up ahead. Anyways, it started spooking us, and eventually one of the other guys actually said what I was thinking, do you think they are running away from something we are walking towards? And pretty much everyone's fears, I'm thinking, amplified one another because the hiking started to feel more unsettling the further we went. Finally, one of the guys steps on a rock or something that isn't firmly in the ground, rolls his ankle badly, and rolls down a hill. It sucked really bad, and we had to turn around and carry him out. I think we all welcomed the excuse not to continue. And as we're walking him out, the number of animals that passed us was at least two or three times more than had passed us on our way in. And I just kept thinking that if something really bad comes ripping through the woods after us, then Sean is a ducking dead man because I'm running for my life. One day I went outside and had a strange feeling of anxiety and fear. It felt as if someone was watching me. Since it was night, I decided to go back inside and go to sleep, calming down. A week or three days later, I invited both of my girlfriends to my house. We ate pizza in the daytime and talked. When it started to get slightly dark, we went inside and talked some more. I had to go back outside again since my pet bird was in the shed. I had the same eerie feeling. I told my girlfriends to come with me, and they did. Supposedly, I wasn't crazy, but I noticed they started getting nervous and told me they were afraid. I put a salt circle around my pet bird with rainwater drops and rosemary. Then we left back inside. It wasn't the first time that happened to me, because I'm guessing my house is haunted due to the common activity. At some point a year later, I was trying to sleep but saw a black figure just staring at me through the mirror. At the time, I was starting to begin to think that I'd been hallucinating and didn't care about it. It was hovering above me, then disappeared once I blinked. That night, I had a nightmare of creatures shifting into people I knew in real life. Manipulating their voice and everything else. Eventually, I woke up in a panic, but I couldn't move. I knew I was having a scene of sleep paralysis. I couldn't move and felt some weight on my back. I was frozen for at least 30 seconds. I still don't know how to explain how that happened. That happened a few days ago. Either I'm crazy or my house is haunted, there is no in between. I went hiking with friends once outside of Los Angeles. It was night hiking to see the stars, and there were three of us. We hiked in pretty deep into nothing but brush and bushes, and all of a sudden we heard some sounds, not animal sounds, in the distance and saw some light pollution. This was strange because it was far deeper than your average person would hike into the hills we'd gone to. Naturally, we went closer to see what was going on, assuming maybe it was a campground. As we get closer, we see a few blotches of black shapes spaced out this evening. At this point, we're pretty confused and a couple hundred yards out. We decided to go closer, but there was no trail, so we kind of shimmied over the brush. This was incredibly stupid because it was nighttime and snakes and yada yada, but we were stupid adolescents at the time. So about a hundred yards out, one of us trips over a rock and falls into the bush. This is a California bush, so it's not exactly deadly, but it can be pretty prickly, and there are cacti all over the place. The guy yells shit as he's going down, and immediately the noises from the campfire stop. 
We all freeze and look over, and then we see that these shapes are in fact robed people, and they're standing around a campfire, and there's not like four or five people, rather closer to 20, and they're all looking over in our direction. It's possible, looking back, that they were a bunch of goths, satanists, or, even worse, cospalayers, but it scared the shit out of us at the time. We bolted immediately and didn't look back. Varmint control for ranches with free-range cattle, about two hours south of Tucson, in the Sky Island, I arrived and parked my vehicle at the mouth of a small canyon and set up shelter about 10 feet away. Approximately one hour before sunset, I made dinner, chatted on the CB with other hunters, and set up my area. I hung out and read a book until about 9-ish. At that time, I heard noise from the canyon. At the mouth, you could see 15 feet in, and then it took a sharp right. The walls were about 12 feet high. But when I heard the noise, it sounded like it came from way deeper in the canyon. It was a repetitive clacking noise. Someone had to connect sticks and continue hitting them together. It did not stop, at least I fell asleep to the noise with my rifle at my side. I woke up at 4 a.m. sharp, had some breakfast, and got ready to head out. I locked my truck and clubbed the steering wheel. And I was off. I walked about 3 miles from the mountain and found a high hill. It was covered in white quartz rock, had massive veins of mica, and was definitely a sight to behold. By the time I arrived at the hill, the sun was up and the coyotes were yapping. I called and called and laid there motionless for two hours. Nothing. I watched a small bug crawl into my scope and fly away. Then that's when I noticed movement about 270 yards away. It was a single coyote. Diseased. I zeroed in on it and noticed it walked funny. It walked leading with its right shoulder, and its head bobbed up and down a little too much. I figured I'd put the poor thing out of its misery. I took aim and squeezed. It connected, and it went down. I walked there to collect the animal. I woke to the spot, but I did not see it. I swear, that's where it fell. Three yards from the sideways barrel cactus. I saw no blood and no trail. Just silence. I knew I had hit it. I watched it go down. I saw it. I searched for 30 minutes and saw nothing that led me to the animal. Duck, there went my $40. I called it a day, it was getting a little warm, and my arms were sore from my rifle. So I hoofed it back. Slowly, in case I ran into another. I made it back to my campsite and saw something that made my blood run cold. My camping stool, which was in the bed of my truck, was set facing into the maw of the canyon. Dead center of the entrance. In the shade of the walls. That's when I heard it again. The clacking. This time it sounded closer, as if it were right at the bend of the canyon. As if whatever it was that was doing was hiding right behind the turn. I didn't dare to grab my chair, it was $10 at the swap meet. I thought about firing a round into the canyon, but I figured it wouldn't do much. I rolled up my tent, keeping a sharp eye on the canyon. At this point, the clacking would stop every time I stopped what I was doing to watch and listen. When I would go back to loading my truck, it would start right back up. I packed my tent, tossed it in the bed, grabbed my lantern and my propane stove, and put them in the bed as well. I put my rifle away. I still had my 1911 at my hip. But I still didn't feel safe. I jumped in my truck and started it. I watched the canyon. Nothing. Not a sound, just the low rumble from the cold started truck. I let her run a bit and warm up. At this time, the canyon was filled with sunlight, as it was noonish. I felt a sense of bravery and wanted to take a quick peek around the bend of the canyon. So I let my truck run, grabbed my pistol, and approached the canyon. I stood at the mouth, listening for any shuffling or clacking. Nothing. It was bright from the sun. I lead with my gun. I stood about 5 feet away from the bend, unsure of what was waiting on the other side. I thought to myself, just grab the chair and book. But I needed to know. I leaned slowly around the corner and saw nothing, it went about 20 feet in and then had a dead end. I did notice animal tracks. Hoof marks and coyote tracks I didn't notice any animals during my stay, and these prints looked very fresh. I stood at the corner, facing down at the dead end. Two very smooth rocks lay at my feet. They did not look like the region, they were light red and smooth, as if they were from the rivers. I turned away, grabbed my chair, and drove off. I felt as though I was being watched. I swear there were eyes on me, and they knew I knew. It felt like a game, like they were the mouse and I was the cat, however, I wouldn't chase. Now I've encountered relics of Native American tribes in the area, old clay pots, nap tools, and smooth stones to grind grains in. But I had thought the tribes were long gone. I spoke to my good friend, a fellow I call Hugh. His last name was Herda. He came from lines of tribe members, his mother and his grandparent, 100% Pasqua blood. 
His father was a mixtech. He spoke of the medicine men that would curse animals and were said to be shapeshifters. Evil beings that were turned the wrong way by the magic. He said what I had experienced was from one of the spirits playing games to get me away from their lands. He said he'd have his bulo pray for me and that I should stay the night, that his parents' home was blessed, and that I would be safe. So I did. This has a definite explanation, but it is still weird and scary. For a while, I was getting into nighttime photography, like taking landscape photos with the starry sky. There's a highway in Washington that leads to a really cool observatory on Mount St. Helens. So one November night, I drove out there at like 10 p.m., walked around, and took pictures until about 2 a.m. Leaving the observatory, you drive down this winding hill that eventually takes you back to the state highway. It's dark, I'm tired, and I start driving down the hill. I found a corner, and there's a bull elk standing in the middle of the road, staring at my car. I'm going slow enough, so I stop with plenty of distance between myself and the elk. As it's staring at me, its family crosses the road behind it. So okay, he's just protecting his family from traffic. He makes his way to the shoulder of the road and appears to be starting to walk away. I start driving again, but this time really slowly, because seeing him startled me, and now I'm tired, alert, and out in the woods. I pass the elk and bring my speed up to about 25, with both hands on the wheel, brights on, and the window rolled down. All of a sudden, this elk is side by side with my car, keeping pace and chasing me. It freaked me out, so I sped up a little bit, and it still kept up. It chased me all the way down the hill, which seemed like a mile, but maybe a little shorter, and then he finally peeled off and disappeared. My best explanation is that maybe my car was threatening its family, and so he had to be a tough guy and chase me away. But the initial panic of seeing him in my headlights, then calming down, and then being blindsided by him chasing my car was enough to give me the jitters for my entire two-hour drive home. My creepiest experiences growing up in a haunted forest. I will be sharing three stories. The first occurrence happened to me six years ago while I was on a hike with my ex-boyfriend. We were walking on a loop in the forest. The particular part of the trail we were walking in had very minimal tree coverage and was pretty open. There were a few small trees, but nothing big enough that a person could hide behind. As I was walking, I heard what sounded like a deep, guttural growl. The sound is coming from right behind my head, as if someone is growling in my ear. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I grew up in this forest, so I know we have a coyote population. I quickly whipped around to fight, and there was nothing there. I looked all around the surrounding forest, in the trees, etc., and there was literally nothing there. There was also no time for whoever or whatever made the noise to run to hide by the time I turned around, as the closest tree was around 10 feet away. My boyfriend asked me if I heard it too, and we cut our hike short and went home. A second occurrence also happened to me. 10 minutes from my parents' house is a giant pond that has a fallen tree leaning against another tree, so you can climb up onto this dead tree and look at the pond. It was a classic smoke spot in high school, so my friend and I decided to make our way there one summer afternoon. We smoke, and almost immediately after we finished smoking, we both got a really bad feeling. At this point, we hear what sounds like a woman screaming. It sounds distant, and we are immediately shaken up. We start looking around to see where it is coming from when not one but two men's voices begin chanting. At this point, the woman's screams begin changing, almost as if she's yelling with a chance. At this point, we are literally running away. Things start to get really scary when the sounds completely stop. We both freeze, look at each other, and the low chanting and screaming start coming from a completely different direction and sound much closer. This continues to happen as we run away from the pond, chanting or screaming in silence, and the voices pick up from a different area of the forest. When we looked around the forest, we couldn't see anything, to leave the pond, you needed to hike up a hill, and nothing was visible from the top. The final, and arguably scariest, story happened to my sister. Five minutes from my parents' house is a giant field overgrown with tall grasses. One night, the sun was setting, and she wanted to run to the field to take pictures. When she got to the path to get to the field, she noticed that it was overgrown with thorns. Not wanting to miss the sunset, she forced her way through the denser forest, separating the trail from the field. She got to the field, took her pictures, and as she turned back and began pushing her way through the forest, she heard what she describes as the most fierce, low, demonic growling she has ever heard. It was not coming from one location, it was coming from all around her. Just like when I had my experience, my sister looked around her in all directions and even into the trees to see if she could spot what was making the noise. There was nothing. She had an overwhelming feeling that if she ran, whatever it was would try to kill her. She decided to say out loud, please don't hurt me. 
I just want to go home. And slowly, he began taking small steps. This worked, and she took step after step while the growling continued until she made it back to the trail. Once she got to the trail, she began sprinting home and said that during her entire run she felt like something was right behind her, but when she looked behind her, nothing was there. Once she made it to my parents' property line, she said the feeling of doom immediately left. So, these are my three stories. I would love to hear people's opinions on what they think could have been happening. The forest still creeps me out to this day, and I never go out near sundown alone. When I was in Cub Scouts, in the UK, so somewhere between 8 and 10, we went on a camping trip. Nothing too crazy, just a campsite with some woodland nearby. In the evening, we were sent out to look for some green sticks in the woodland for roasting marshmallows over the fire. Great, I thought, and I went off on my own, looking for the perfect stick. I probably wasn't more than 20 meters from the campsite, but I felt like I was deep in the woods and alone, but I wasn't worried, I was just on the lookout for a stick for my marshmallow. I was scanning the ground to see what I could find when I heard a noise. I looked up to see someone step out from behind a tree wearing a full face gas mask. I literally just collapsed onto the ground, screaming in terror. I read a lot of my dad's books as a kid and was brought up on a diet of Tom Clancy, Michael Crichton, and the like. In my mind, I was convinced that there was some kind of chemical attack and that I was going to die there in those woods. I just curled up in a ball on the floor, crying, until someone found me. I think it was just a teenager ducking with the kids from the cubs, but in that moment, it was awful. Still the most fear I've ever felt. I spent the rest of the evening crying on the lap of one of the leaders. I never did find a stick for my marshmallow, either. <laughs>